Hey guys, Pastor Ben here with another review and reflection. Today I want to talk about a wonderful little book I just finished reading called The Lord's Supper as the Sign and Meal of the New Covenant. This is uh, written by Guy Prentice Waters and is part of the uh, Short Studies and Biblical Theology series that uh, Crossway has been putting out. So this was written in 2019, so it's a couple years old now. I guess going on five years old, that's hard to hard to believe, uh, but really wonderfully written uh, little book on the Lord's Supper that I'm excited to share with you. So if you haven't heard of Guy Waters, he teaches uh, New Testament at Reformed Theological Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi. He is uh, an ordained minister in the PCA as well. Wonderful uh, man, wonderful scholar. He's written a couple of very helpful books, and this is uh, uh, another wonderful offering from Guy Waters on the subject of the Lord's Supper. Uh, this book, I picked it up because I was re, uh, preaching through the Gospel of Matthew uh, in my church. We're coming towards the end of the Gospel of Matthew right now, and we were approaching the section in Matthew 26 where Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. And so I wanted to read a little bit more about that subject, and I had this book on my shelf. I'm not even sure if someone gave it to me or if I ordered it or how I got it, but uh, I had kind of been walking past this for a while, intending to read it at some point, so I thought, hey, I'll pull it off and uh, and read it before I preach on the subject of the Lord's Supper. And it was just the right book at just the right time. God is so good to do that uh, so often, I find. And um, uh, it's it, it was helpful not only as a kind of reminder of uh, a biblical and reformed understanding of the Lord's Supper, but because of the unique way that it approached that subject. And that's what I want to talk to you about here in this review. So uh, this is a book on the Lord's Supper. And typically, when we come to the subject of the Lord's Supper, it's something that has been so fiercely debated through the history of the church. There's so many questions that people have and different views that people have that it's easy to approach that, that topic uh, through the lens of either historical theology or systematic theology to the exclusion of biblical theology. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is this that when we come to the subject of the Lord's Supper, it's easy to sort of uh, bring to our study of the biblical text all of the different historical uh, views that have um, arisen about the Lord's Supper, the question of who should partake in the Lord's Supper, what's going on in the Lord's Supper, is Christ present in the Lord's Supper, and if so, how, and, you know, there's all these kinds of questions, all of which are important and legitimate, and need to be talked about from a systematic standpoint and understood from a historical standpoint. But what can often happen is that when we come to the Lord's Supper, we're, we're jumping into those texts in the New Testament where the Lord's Supper is instituted in the Gospels or where we have instructions about the Lord's Supper in the book of Acts or especially 1 Corinthians. And that becomes kind of the parameters we, we work within as we kind of figure out what's going on in the Lord's Supper. What that misses, and what I think Guy Waters' book helps us to uh, recover, is that the Lord's Supper is coming um, as a covenant sign. Which means, if we are to understand what it's doing, we need to understand what a covenant is, we need to understand what covenant signs are, and we need to understand why one of the signs of the new covenant is a meal, and what the significance of that is. And that's really what I think uh, Waters does. This is part of the short studies in biblical theology. Um, so biblical theology, for those of you who may be wondering what that term means, it doesn't just mean biblical in contrast to unbiblical. Of course, we want all of our theology to be biblical. When it's talking about biblical theology, it's talking about a certain approach to doing theology, where you're, you're looking at um, where a theme or idea or teaching first emerges in the scriptures, and then seeing how that uh, teaching is unfolded or progresses as, as you study a, a certain topic. So the, the, the contrast there is with systematic theology, where you might um, sort of take everything you know about a topic, throw it all together, and try to sort of uh, synthesize it and systematize it. That's a very useful and valid task, but it's also helpful to see how something develops over time. And that's really what biblical theology is doing. And what Guy Waters is doing in this book is to take the subject of the Lord's Supper as a sign of the covenant, and to trace those different threads from Genesis through to Revelation. So how does he do that? Well, uh, his, uh, his approach is um, to begin with the idea of a covenant. When Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, for example, in Matthew 26 that I was just preaching on, he, he, he talks about how uh, 
this is his blood of the covenant. Uh, Luke tells us this is the blood of the new covenant. And, and Paul picks up that language in 1 Corinthians 11 when he's giving instructions to the church in Corinth about how they are to partake and remember uh, about the Lord's Supper. So the, the, the meal of the Lord's Supper is a covenant meal. And so Waters begins by just walking us through what he calls covenant basics. What is a covenant? Where do we see it in the Bible? How does the, the structure uh, or how does the, the, um, the theme of covenants structure the Bible as a whole? And so what he does there in that first chapter is very important. It's a good review. Um, we've been at our church uh, studying the subject of covenant theology in our Sunday school. So um, everything that I was reading was very much resonating with that. And what Waters offers is a very standard kind of Westminster Reformed understanding of covenant theology, that there are um, many covenants in the Bible, but that all of them really fit into one of two covenants that God has made, either the covenant of works that he made with Adam, uh, through which sin and misery have entered the world, or the covenant of grace that God made with his son, Jesus Christ, through which life and renewal have entered into the world. So he's, he's working with the same mindset that I think you see Paul working with in places like Romans 5 or 1 Corinthians 15, where all of humanity, all of the Bible's story is either in Adam or in Christ, and that the, the various covenants we see God making with his people, whether it's with Noah, whether it's with Abraham or Moses or David or the New Covenant, that these are all different parts of or, or stages of, or you, the Westminster Confession uses the language, administrations of the one covenant of grace. So he, he lays that kind of foundation of covenant theology there in that first chapter and does a good job of summarizing a lot of content and material because there is so much to talk about there. Having given, having kind of fleshed out that thread a little bit, he then goes to the question of the signs of the covenant. God established different covenants in both the Old and New Testaments, and with those covenants, he would give signs. So, for example, uh, in God's covenant with Noah, right, he gives a sign. He gives a sign of the rainbow to, um, to remind him and to remind his people that God... Uh, will no longer destroy the earth. He will not come in his full judgment that the earth deserves, but will withhold that until grace can be accomplished. We know in God's covenant with Abraham, for example, that the, the sign of circumcision was very critically given and, and very much stressed and emphasized. Um, and you can kind of go on through the different covenants and see different covenant signs in, uh, that, that God has instituted. Very famously, of course, in the new covenant, we have two uh, covenant uh, signs uh, what, we, what we call sacraments that, that God instituted through his son, Jesus Christ, baptism and the Lord's Supper. And so in the second chapter, what Waters is doing is helping us to understand why God gives covenant signs and helping us to walk through the various covenant signs that we see and unpacking their significance. And there were some wonderful insights there along the way. Then thirdly, having talked about covenants and covenant signs, he then focuses in on the theme of covenant meals. And this was the chapter that maybe had the most original material to me, at least, that I hadn't really come across before. And that was uh, walking us through both the meals that are given as covenant signs. So of course, the Lord's Supper is the main one of those that the book is about, but also going back to the Passover meal, for example, as a, as a covenant sign that was also a meal, and tracing along with that the various meals that God has with his people, and the prophecies especially that uh, exist about this theme of, of God sitting down with his people, feasting with his people, eating with his people. This theme of a covenant meal is something that runs all through the Bible. And so he goes through not only, only the Passover, but the, um, the other uh, of the seven um, uh, annual feasts that Israel celebrated, and the prophetic um, witness about uh, covenant meals, tracing it in through the Gospel of John, where Jesus talks about being the bread of life, you know, all these wonderful things. So he's, he's kind of working his way up to the Lord's Supper by beginning with covenants, talking about covenant signs, talking about covenant meals, and then in the fourth chapter, he brings us to the Lord's Supper as the sign and meal of the new covenant. So you kind of have the whole table of contents there in, in the title, in, in one sense. And he walks then through the Lord's Supper and covers a lot of the, again, standard 
theology we would expect. He goes through the gospel narratives. He goes through what we find in, in Acts and in the epistles, talks about the significance of the Lord's Supper, and um, goes through a couple of the key passages in 1 Corinthians 10 and 1 Corinthians 11. Very helpful stuff, kind of brings together Paul's view. And then he has a short concluding chapter where he gives us a, a review of everything that he's covered and just pulls those threads together. And then he tackles three questions briefly uh, that the church has to wrestle with and has always wrestled with when it comes to the Lord's Supper. How is Christ present in the Lord's Supper is the first question he asks. The second one is who may come to the supper? And then the third is how is the Lord's Supper like and unlike baptism? Now in, in those just couple pages as he's dealing with that, he's tackling some things that are, have been very controversial. So there's certainly more that could be written on them. But I find it helpful that um, in a sense, as I was reading this book, what I realized is uh, Waters' book has, I think, two great virtues. One, he brings into view and emphasizes um, the, the, the role of covenant meals in a way that I had not really thought about before. So that third chapter right there in the middle um, was, a, was a key kind of per paradigm or perspective thing that I think I'll always have with me now as I look at the Lord's Supper and as I look back at the meals of the Old Testament to see the connections that are there. So that was very, very helpful for me. But beyond that, in many ways, he doesn't have a lot of brand new content, which, you know, you would expect. Uh, he's, he's teaching biblical and historic theology. But what sets this book apart, I think, is that he kind of comes at the Lord's Supper from a different direction. Um, where he ends up is often where people begin. And as I was kind of thinking about it, it was, this is the analogy that came to my mind. I think a lot of works on the Lord's Supper, and as we talk about the Lord's Supper, we often approach it as if it's as if it's a machine, um, if I can use this analogy, as if it's a machine that we then take apart and we sort of show the different pieces. Okay, so what's going on here is Christ is instituting this and uh, it's a uh, covenant sign and it's this covenant meal and uh, here's what's going on with the covenants. And we kind of work our way back from the finished thing, the Lord's Supper, uh, as a sign of the new covenant, back to these other truths. And I think what's so helpful about Waters' book is that he kind of works the other way around. He begins with, with nothing, as it were, and then begins to build the machine before our eyes so that we end up with the Lord's Supper as a sign and meal of the New Covenant. And then that makes sense. Those phrases carry weight because we're not deconstructing and defining things that were put together and we've now taken them apart, but he's instead putting it together with us looking over his shoulder so that we can see how the Bible is leading us to the Lord's Supper. And so then when you come to a passage like Matthew 26 or 1 Corinthians 11, where the Lord's Supper is being instituted or we're being reminded of that institution, it carries more weight. It's more significant. And, uh, and it helps to clarify a number of the questions that people have about the Lord's Supper. So I found this to be a fascinating little book, very short read, very well written, very biblical and confessional. But having some really creative uh, elements in terms of some of the content and emphases that it's bringing and just the, the way it's coming at the topic. So this is actually the first book I've read in this little series, The Short Studies and Biblical Theology. I have one or two other volumes in the series and I'm eager to dig into them now that I've read this one. But I would highly recommend if, you're, if you enjoy biblical theology, if you have questions about the Lord's Supper, if you're working through covenant theology and want to know how that intersects with the Lord's Supper as the sign and meal of the New Covenant, I would really strongly recommend that you pick up a copy of the Lord's Supper as the sign and meal of the New Covenant by Guy Prentice Waters.